characterization of of categories of models of uh, clans and some of you might know that i talked about clans already at tot uf 2020 and at ct 2021 and there i presented a conjecture concerning the uh, characterization of categories of models of a clan and in this talk i will give or at least outline a proof of this conjecture the, the talk is uh, is divided in three parts uh, to start i will recall uh, facts about classical functorial semantics of algebraic and essentially algebraic theories then in the main talk i will introduce clans and uh, prove the theorem and then if there's time I will give some more examples and talk about models in higher homotopy types. So let's get started with algebraic theories. A single sorted algebraic theory that's the most well known kind is just a pair of a signature in the set of equations where the signature is a family of sets of n-ary operations for each natural number n and then the equations are pairs of open terms over the signature. And given such a single sorted algebraic theory, we can construct a syntactic category where the objects are natural numbers and the morphisms from n to m are m, m tuples in n m tuples of terms in n variables and modulo the provable equality, provable from the axioms in the set of equations E. The, uh, identities in the syntactic category are lists of variables and composition is given by substitution. I should say the syntactic category that it's of course uh, known as Lavier theory of the um, algebraic theory. So um, the interesting thing is um, given a single sorted algebraic theory, the syntactic category has finite products given by sum of natural numbers and moreover, the category of set models is equivalent to the functor category of finite product preserving functor from the syntactic category to set. Um, so this suggests a, a kind of abstraction where we just say a finite product theory is a small finite product category C. <coughs> Sorry. So essentially, we'll forget about the single sortedness here. And then we say a model of a C is just a finite product preserving functor to set. Um, and we denote the category of models by mod C um, and view it as a full subcategory or define it to be the full subcategory of the set valued functor category. And in particular, for every object of the theory, the co representable functor is a model because home functors preserve arbitrary limits in the second argument. And Therefore, the dual Yonada embedding um, that goes from C op to functors from C to Z co restricts or factors through this inclusion of the category of models. And it's contravariant because the uh, gamma gets mapped to C gamma dash, and it's contravariant in the first argument. Um, so we get a full embedding here of the opposite of the theory into the category of models. And I call this Z because. It's dual to Yonada and Yonada is Y. So throughout the talk, I will use using the letter Z for this kind of embedding. Um, so we can do exactly the same and replace finite products with finite limits. And then we say a finite limit theory is a small finite limit category. A model is a finite limit preserving functor into set. And it turns out that finite limit theories are more expressive than finite product theories, for example, uh, structures like categories, posets, two categories, monomorphic categories, and so on, are definable by finite limit theories, but not by finite product theories. Um, conversely, everything that is definable by a finite product theory is definable by a finite limit theory, as we shall see. Um, uh, again, co-representable functors are models. Oops, now I got lost here. Where was I here? Co-representable functors are models. And we get this embedding Z from the opposite of the theory into the category of models. And moreover, in this case, we can characterize the essential image of the embedding. For this, we need the following terminology. Call an object C of a co-complete locally small category X compact if the co-representable functor preserves filtered co-limits. 
the traditional terminology for this is finitely presentable. And I'm saying compact following Lurie because it's a bit shorter. And now we call a category X locally finitely presentable. If it's locally small and co-complete, the full subcategory on compact objects is essentially small and dense. Then one can show that for every finite limit theory, the category of models is locally finitely presentable. Uh, and moreover, the essential image of this embedding functor from the opposite of the theory uh, coincides with the full subcategory of compact objects. So this observation uh, gives, in a straightforward manner, gives rise to a bi-equivalence of two categories to a contravariant bi-equivalence, where on the left, we have the two category of finite limit uh, categories and small finite limit preserving functors. And on the right, we have uh, the category LFP of locally finitely presentable categories and functors preserving small finite limits and filtered co-limits. So you think should think about this kind of functors as forgetful functors, for example, the Forgetful functor from rings to abelian groups would be a one cell in this uh, two, large two category, or very large two category. And so this uh, bioequivalence was discovered by Gabriel and Ulmer, I guess, can be found in this book. Um, so there is an analog analogous uh, a duality also for finite product theories that is slightly uh, more. Oops, I did something. Sorry, F. I'm trying to move the controls out of the way um, because they're covering part of the screen. But now I've got something in the way here. How can I make this go away? Ah, there's a weird menu now. Um, for us, uh, yes, it looks just fine. Yeah, okay. it's fine for us. It, it went away. It went away. Um, okay, so there's an analogous uh, uh, bi-equivalence or duality also for finite product theories, which is slightly well known, uh, less well known. So it's on the top of this uh, square diagram. And here on the left, we have the um, two category of Cauchy complete finite product categories. And on the right, we have the two category of algebraic categories and algebraic functors, where an algebraic category is a locally finitely presentable category, which, uh, which is bar exact, and where the compact regular projective objects are dense. And I, I will uh, explain these uh, terms later. And an uh, algebraic functor is a functor that preserves small limits, filtered co-limits, and regular epimorphisms. So in this case, we have to add this regular epimorphism condition. Um, and it turns out, OK, so the duality works as follows. Given a, a finite product, a small finite product category, we send it to its category of models, which is the finite product preserving functors into set. And conversely, given an algebraic category, we send it to the opposite of the full subcategory of compact projective objects, which can be shown to have small, uh, finite co-products. And therefore, then we get a finite product category by taking the opposite. Um, so this, uh, so first of all, we have to take the Cauchy complete finite product categories here, because by this operation from right to left, we there's no chance that we can uh, separate objects that are where one is the retract of another. So it's we can only recover the an algebraic theory from its category of models up to retract closure. Um, so the up, upper uh, duality can be viewed as a special case of the lower duality, um, because on the right, we just have an inclusion functor. Every algebraic category is a, a locally finitely presentable category. Every algebraic functor is a locally finitely presentable functor. And then on the left, there must be an analogous functor. And it's the left adjoint to the forgetful functor from finite limit categories to finite product categories. So that it freely adds uh, somehow equalizers while preserving the existing finite products. Um, so there's also a formulation 
of this upper duality in terms of sifted co-limits, but uh, that is not help us, help helpful for us today. So we won't be using that. Um, okay, so that was the overview of uh, classical functorial semantics. Now we come to clans. As a motivation, let's observe that finite limit theories have a very nice duality theory, but they are kind of far from syntax and they come without an explicit uh, notion of syntactic representation of theories. So there are various syntactic counterparts uh, corresponding to finite limit theories. For example, Freud's essentially algebraic theories, with, which extend algebraic theories by a controlled form of partiality. Cartmel's generalized algebraic theories, which introduce dependent types. Johnston's Cartesian theories, which introduce a limited form of existential quantification. And recently, I, I saw this paper of Palmgren and Vickers on quasi-equational theories, which are, I think, a bit more of a sophisticated account of essentially algebraic theories, maybe, if I understood this correctly, and probably there are others. So clans can be viewed as a categorical representation of Cartmel's generalized algebraic theories. And like all of the notions of theories in this list, they are as expressive as finite limit theories, but somehow they give a finer analysis and they're closer to syntax. So let's uh, start with the definition. A clan is a small category T with a terminal object, which is furthermore equipped with a class of so-called display maps, denoted T dagger, and written with an arrow with a triangle head, such that pullbacks of display maps along arbitrary maps exist and are display maps. Display maps are closed under composition and isomorphisms and terminal projections are display maps. Um, so the definition of this can be, first reference I found is in the thesis of Taylor. And the name is due to Joyal, who motivated as it is saying that uh, a clan is a collection of families, but clan, uh, it, but Joyal called the display maps vibrations. So the term display map is also used by Taylor. Um, so um, the relation to, okay, so I should say that these are also closely related to things like contextual categories and categories of families. Um, and the relation to the semantics of dependent type theories is that display maps correspond, uh, represent type families. Um, and we, we also observe that clans have finite products as pullbacks over one because terminal projections are display maps. Um, so, okay, examples. Finite product categories can be viewed as clans where the collection of display maps is precisely the product projections and finite limit uh, categories can be viewed as clans where we take all arrows to be um, uh, display maps. We call such clans finite product clans and finite limit clans. And moreover, the syntactic category of any uh, Cartmel style generalized algebraic theory is a clan. So this, uh, the syntax of Cartmel style generalized algebraic theories is um, rather complicated. So I won't give a general um, construction account here, but um, I'll give like the nicest canonical example, which is the clan for categories. So here, um, remember the uh, theory has to be, the opposite of the theory has to be a subcategory of the models, which we want to be categories. So we take the theory to be the opposite of the categories that are free on finite graphs. And we take the display maps, the functors that are induced by graph inclusions. So why is that a syntactic category? Well, think about the theory of categories as having one sort of objects and the dependent sort of morphisms depending on two objects. And so then if we write a context over the signature, I'm not even mentioning the operations. Um, the only context that, that we can write um, uh, declare first a list of objects and then a list of um, 
a, a list of morphisms where each morphism depends on two objects. And that is precisely uh, the data of a finite graph. Uh, so, op um, and also display maps have to be kind of projections from longer contexts to shorter contexts. And these are dual to graph inclusions. So this is why this definition makes sense. Um, and okay, models. A model of a clan is a functor to set which preserves uh, the terminal object and pullbacks of display maps. The category of models is denoted by mod t, is again locally finitely presentable because it is given by a finite limit sketch. So a graph can be viewed as a finite limit sketch. And again, the category of models contains the opposite of the clan by means of this uh, inclusion that I call Z. And so the co-restriction of the dual Leonard embedding. Um, so for finite product clans, we the models coincide with the models of the finite product theory as we would hope, and the same for finite limit class. So finite product theories and finite limit theories can really be viewed as special cases of class. Um, and the model of the, the models of the uh, theory for categories that I gave on the previous slide is indeed the category of small categories. So here's a core observation. The same category of models can be represented by different clans. For example, if I have a single sorted algebraic theory, like the theory of groups, then I can represent it by a finite product clan, so the Lavier theory, but I can also uh, complete the finite product theory to a finite limit theory and then take the associated finite limit clan. And then I get two different clans, but they both have the category of groups. Um, as models. And Jonas? Yeah. It looks like Steve has a question. Uh yeah. Is that a good time? You, sure. In saying that the category of models is locally finitely presentable, you said quickly something about a graph as a finite limit sketch. The graphs was your example. So a clan, a clan is a finite limit sketch. Did I say graph? Yeah. I, I meant clan. Okay. So this doesn't have anything to do with the particular example of graphs. No, no, no. Three categories. Um, then I, I misspoke. Okay. Um, thanks. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So different clans can have equivalent categories of models. So that means. Uh, so we would like to have a duality between clans and the categories of models, analogous to a Gabriel-Ulmer duality. But that can't work by uh, due to this observation. Um, so if we want to get the duality working, then you have, have to we have to equip the model side of the bi-equivalence with additional data. And the solution is that we equip the categories of models with additional structure in forms of a weak factorization system. So and this weak factorization system will be co-fibrantly generated by the image of the class of display maps under this, this inclusion functor. So, so specifically, that means that a map is in the right class if it has the right lifting property against all arrows Z of P for display maps P. So this class is denoted F and we call them the maps full maps. And the left class, we call the maps in the left class, they call extensions. And they can either be def defined as by the left lifting property with respect to the right class or by taking the closure of the generators under push out and retracts and transfinite composition. Uh, so in particular, I call an object where the initial inclusion is in the left class, I call a zero extension. So that's like a co-fibrant object. But I don't want to use the terminology co-fibrant and trivially fibrant because that trivially fibrant it suggests some kind of homotopy equivalence, which 
is which we don't have in the, for this refactorization system. So in general, there's we shouldn't view any either of these classes as a kind of equivalence. And that's why I use these terms full maps for the left for the right class and extensions for the left class. So co-representable objects are always zero extensions because uh, terminal projections are display maps. Um, and yeah, and I should say the same big factorization system was also introduced by Simon Henri in a hottest uh, talk almost exactly two years ago. So that was in January 2020, the language of a model category. But I should say I started working on this on, I think in December 2019, and then January um, 2020, Simon gave this talk. So that was quite a coincidence. Um, but then Simon also sent me a reprint from 2016, where he already did something similar. So I should have included this reference, I guess. Um, so, um, okay, full maps. Uh, let's talk uh, in more detail about full maps. So a map is full if it has the right lifting property with respect to uh, these images of display maps. So what does it mean? If you look at a lifting square where on the left, we have a co-representable of a display map and the right, we have an arbitrary morphism of uh, uh, models, then the arrow here is an element of A over gamma. The element here, the arrow here is an element of B over delta. And the commutation says that they both should give rise to an element of B over gamma. And this is, displayed here in the right diagram. So I have something A of gamma, something in A of a B of delta that maps to the same B of gamma. And then the lifting says that in this case, there should exist something here that is mapped to the pair of arrows by the, um, by the corresponding, uh, by the two, by, to the pair of elements by the two arrows. And that precisely means that this uh, naturality square is a weak pullback. And so that means full maps are maps where natural display naturality squares are weak pullbacks. So we can look at special cases. If we look at this condition for terminal projections, and we see that square like this has to be a weak pullback, and that precisely means that the top if map is surjective. That means that full maps are in particular component-wise uh, surjective and therefore regular epimorphisms. Um, so for finite limit clans, only isomorphisms are full because all arrows are display maps, in particular diagonals are display map. That means uh, squares like this also have to be weak pullbacks. And from this, it follows that this component has to be injective. So if it's surjective by this condition, injective by this condition, it has to be bijective, all uh, components. For finite product clans, it's slightly more interesting. So here the full maps are precisely the regular epimorphisms. So it's kind of the regular, uh, the maximal class of full maps. And the extensions are co-product inclusions with a, a projective summand. In particular, zero extensions are precisely projective objects because they have to have this um, lifting condition against regular epimorphisms. And that's precisely the definition of projectivity. Or, uh, more precisely, I should call this regular projectivity. But if I say projective, I always mean regular projective. OK, so an important thing for us is the fat small object argument. Uh, in, so here I want to motivate this by looking at some subcategories of models of a clan and of a finite product theory. So let's start by considering a finite product theory C. Then we have category of models and the opposite of the theory embeds. And there are certain other full subcategories of the models. Namely, there are compact objects and the models are the filtered co-limit completion of that. And here, the upper arrow then is a reflexive coequalizer co completion. And then there are projective objects that we already mentioned. And the inclusion of projective objects is an uh, X W lex completion. That means, so this is a category with weak finite limits and there's a notion of uh, exact completion of such a category, and this is an instance. And then there's the uh, subcategory of flat objects. So the flat models of an algebraic theory are by definition precisely 
the filtered co-limits of, um, of uh, co-representables. And it is important to observe that these filtered co-limits are always computed freely in the functor category. Be and th that's freely because the, uh, this category of models is closed under filtered limit and the filtered co-limits in the pre-shift categories, in the pre-shift category. And what is also important <coughs> is that the projective models are in included in the flat models. And this is because projective objects can always be represented as uh, retracts of free objects. And free objects are filtered co-limits of finitely generated free objects. And then uh, retracts are also a filtered co-limit, and so neither of these constructions lead out of this class. Okay, so in the case of clans, we have an analogous diagram with models, uh, compact, flat, and here instead of projective, we have the zero extensions. And uh, so, and here it turns out that the zero extensions are also contained in the flat objects, so they are also uh, filter co-limits of co-representables in a free way. And this is shown using the fat small object argument. And so this is uh, described in this paper that I cited below by Makai Rosicki and Evokrinek. I don't know how to pronounce that. And um, so what they do is that they give a kind of Analysis, so they give a decomposition or alternative presentation of these co limits that appear in this small object argument. That instead of doing this transfinite compositions, you attach all cells like at a minimal level um, and therefore get a, get a wider diagram that turns out to be filtered if you do it the right way. So, okay, so the important le lesson here is that all zero extensions are. Uh, filtered co-limits of representatives, of core representatives. Um, okay, with this, we can reconstruct the clan from the category of models as we would like. So, and uh, in analogy to the finite product uh, case, where we reconstruct the clan, uh, uh, the, the theory from the models as pro compact projective objects, in this case, we take the compact zero extensions. And so we say C, given a clan T, we take C to be the full subcategory of the models on compact zero extensions. Then we have already observed, I think, that co-representable objects are always compact and zero extensions. Therefore, this uh, contravariant inclusion factors, factors through this subcategory, and I call this uh, again, co-restricted inclusion E. And moreover, the subcategory C is closed under, it contains the initial object and is closed under appropriate pushouts. And, <clears throat> and that means it is a co-clan, meaning the dual is a clan, and now the, where we take extensions as co-display maps. Um, okay, so, uh, now we can state a theorem, and the theorem is that this full inclusion of the co-clan into the uh, of the dual opposite of the clan into the compact zero extensions is is a Cauchy completion, and by uh, that means that every object in the co-domain has to be a retract of an object in the domain. In other words, we want to show that every compact zero extension is a retract of a co-representable object. So to prove this, uh, let C be a compact zero extensions. Since zero extensions are flat, in a, uh, the category of elements is filtered. So here it is important that these are filtered co-limits in this free way that I mentioned. Um, um, thus, uh, C itself is a filtered co-limit of co-representables. If you take the canonical co-limit, and since the object is also compact, the identity arrow into this filtered co-limit factors through uh, a co-limit inclusion, a co cone inclusion, and there we uh, get a retract. So this arrow and this exhibit C as a retract of this co-representable. 
So this gives us um, already half of a duality. And in fact, we can already state a duality as follows. So we call a category clan algebraic um, if it is the category of models of a clan um, equipped with, this, with a weak factorization system. So a clan algebraic category is a pair of a category X and the weak factorization system that arises as models of a clan. And then we get a contravariant by equivalence between the two category of Cauchy complete clans. Again, we need this Cauchy completeness condition because here uh, we only reconstruct uh, a, a clan up to Cauchy completion. Um, and so functors in this two category have to be functors preserving uh, terminal object and display maps and pullbacks of display maps. And on the right, we have the two category of clan algebraic categories and functors preserving small limits, filtered co-limits, and uh, furthermore, full maps. Okay, so now the obvious question is, this is a definition by construction. Is there a more abstract definition of clan algebraic categories? Well, let's try to come up with a, a, with a list of conditions that characterize clan algebraic categories. So given a clan algebraic category X with weak factorization system EF, we know that the category is co-complete. It has a small dense family of compact zero extensions and the weak factorization system is co-fibrantly generated by maps between compact zero extensions. And okay, so now let's assume we have a category X with a weak factorization system satisfying these conditions. Then one can again show that the subcategory of compact zero extensions is a co-clan. And then we can take the models of this co-clan, we get this inclusion functor, and then we can do a kind of nerve realization adjunction where to any object of the, of the uh, category X, we associate this restricted re representable functor, which then is a model. And this nerve functor has a left adjoint, which is given by a co-limit over uh, the category of elements of this projection functor followed by J. So this is the usual construction. How also, this is how we would also do it if we took instead of models here, the full pre sheaf category and this construction uh, restricts to models. Um, so we would like this uh, to be, a, um, this adjunction to be an equivalence, then we would have shown that uh, every category satisfying these conditions is category of models of a clan, but it's not an equivalence in general. So here's a counter example. We take X to be the full subcategory of functors from uh, the two up to set. So that's the, uh, the full subcategory on injections. So that is the category whose objects are injective functions and whose morphisms are commutative squares. On this category, we have a co fibrantly generated weak factorization system, um, which is co fibrantly generated just by the initial inclusions of the uh, representable functors. And then the compact zero extensions form a co clan. And if I take the models, I don't get the original category back, but I get a larger category. Namely, I get the entire func functor category not only the injections. So then in this nerve adjunct, uh, realization adjunction, the nerve is fully faithful, but not essentially subjective. And in fact, it's always fully faithful by the density condition in, in this list. As soon as the compact zero extensions are dense, we always know that the right adjoint is fully faithful. So the conclusion of this counter example is that we're missing an exactness condition uh, analogous to the bar exactness condition in the characterization of ordinary algebraic categories. So um, let's recall what bar exactness is. So a finite limit category is bar exact if all equivalence relations have stable effective quotients, um, where a quotient is effective if it's kernel pair as the original equivalence relation. Um, 
So this bar acceptance property can't hold for arbitrary clan algebraic categories because those include the finite limit clans, and there we don't have uh, bar exactness in general. Um, however, we have a kind of a relativized um, on or like we, we have a parametrized version of the exactness condition, which is parametrized by the class of by the by the class of full maps, and so one can show that for any clan, the category of models has full and effective quotients of component-wise full equivalence relations. So an equivalence relation is called component-wise full. Well, if it's two components, which we always know are regular epis because they're split epis, but now we additionally require that they're full. And so that's a stronger condition. And so the lemma says that for all those, for every equivalence relation like this, the co-equalizer map is a full map and it's the kernel pairs again the original equivalence relation and so the proof is by taking the quotient component wise and then observing that it's a model again okay so sorry quick question Jonas. yeah they should also or are they also uh pullback stable these quotients what are they pullback stable or stable um i mean we know that full maps are uh, pullback stable. And so that's the analogous condition. Okay. So, yes, in a sense. Um, because, I mean, if the quotient is full, and then, then the full map pulls back and the kernel pair pulls back. So, yes, it's pullback stable. Um, okay. So now we want to give, we want to try to characterize clan algebraic categories. It turns out that we do indeed get a um, characterization by adding to this list of conditions this exactness condition here. And so to prove this, I introduce some term terminology. Let's say an adequate category is a category X with a refactorization system, uh, such that the category is co-complete, has a small dense family of complex zero extensions. Refactorization system is co fibratively generated again by maps between complex zero extensions. And now additionally, this step, uh, exactness condition, um, uh, this should be full. X has full and effective portions of component-wise full equivalence relations. So this should not be stable here, but full. Um, so we want to show that adequate categories are clan algebraic. And we start collecting some lemma towards this end. First, we show uh, we observe that if the category is adequate and we have a finite limit preserving functors that maps full maps to a um, uh, to a set that maps full maps to subjections, then this functor preserves quotients of component-wise full equivalence relations. So this is because if I have a component-wise full equivalence relations and its quotient map, then this is again the kernel pair. If I apply F to this, uh, the functor F, then the quotient map is mapped to a subjection and this is mapped to its kernel pair, but in set, uh, every subjection is the quotient of its kernel pair. So, okay, so the idea of the main proof that adequate categories are clan algebraic. Assume that uh, category X is adequate, then we look again at this nerf realization adjunction and we want to show that it's an equivalence. Uh, again, by density, the right adjoint is always fully faithful. So the co-unit is an isomorphism. So it remains to show that the unit of the adjunction is an isomorphism. And for every A, and the unit is, for every algebra A, and the unit is a, nat uh, a natural transformation whose component live in the category of models, which are uh, uh, set-valued functors. So we have to look at the pointwise at the unit and show that all these maps are bijections for compact zero extensions, C. So now we know that this co-representable functor that appears on the right here, homing out of C, preserves filtered co-limits and quotients of component-wise full equivalence relations because it's compact and a zero extension and by the previous lemma. So we'd like to decompose this co-limit here in terms of these constructions, uh, filtered co limit and quotients of component wise for, uh, for equivalent relations. So, this is essentially what we're doing, but 
uh, we need some more um, uh, technology for that. So the technology that we need uh, is the so-called jointly full cones. So given an adequate category X and a diagram it, we call a cone of, uh, over the diagram jointly full if it is if we have the lifting condition analogous to the definition of full maps, but where in the lower right corner of the lifting square we have a diagram instead of a instead of a single object. So we have an instance of the square for every um, for every uh, object of the index category. So essentially, it means if I have a square or a family of squares where this is a cone and this is a cone, and so this commutes for all i, then has to exist an H such that um, the upper triangle commutes in the lower for all i. So if this uh, such an H exists for all squares with a full uh, with an extension e on the left, then we call this cone jointly full, and actually it's easy to see that uh, the cone is jointly full if and only if the canonical map to the limit of the cone is full. So why do I give this uh, uh, complicated formulation if it just means that the map to the limit is full? Well, because I, will, I want to consider those without taking the limit. We'll see why. Um, OK, another definition. And I ran out of and it wasn't creative with the terminology here. So a nice diagram in a adequate category X is a two truncated simplicial object like this, where all the objects are zero extensions. The two maps from A1 to A0 are full. And in this square, from where we have A2, A1, A1, and A0, it's um, uh, which commutes by one of the simplicial identities. Uh, we require that the left upper left two arrows form a jointly full cone over the lower right arrows. So this square is the square that is required to be a pullback in the um, Siegel condition. So that's a kind of a weak Siegel condition. Um, the square has to be a jointly full weak pullback somehow. Um, and then we require a symmetry map from A1 to A1 that commutes that such that these two triangles commute. And the fifth condition is the weirdest one. So there exists a zero extension A tilde and full maps A tilde to FG from A tilde to A1 that constitute a jointly full cone over this diagram. Um, OK, and we will see what this condition is good for in a moment. So with this uh, definition, I want to prove several lemmas. First of all, we want to show that for every nice diagram, um, the pairing of D0 and D1 from A1 to A0 cross A0 admits a composition into a full map followed by a monomorphism. And moreover, the monomorphism is a component-wise full equivalence relation. So these uh, nice diagrams should be re resolutions of component-wise full equivalence relations. That's how you should think about that. And how do we prove that? Well, first of all, um, the fifth condition here tells us precisely that this map here, the kernel pair of this map has full components. And from this, it follows that if you take the co-equalizer uh, co of the kernel pair, then we get a full map. And we can factor this map through it. And then we can also show that the remaining map is a monomorphism. And moreover, component was full. Um, and it is an equivalence relation uh, that follows from the other conditions. So symmetry, no, reflexivity follows just from the simplicial diagram, symmetry from that, and transitivity from that, because as I already said, it's kind of a weak Siegel condition. Um, next lemma that we can show is that if X is an adequate category and F from X to Z functor preserving finite limits that sends full maps to surjections, then for every nice diagram, F preserves co-equalizers of 
uh, these maps T0 and T1. And this is basically by the lemma before that, well, the image of the pairing of these two arrows is a component by full equivalence relation. And we've already seen that this kind of functors preserves quotas of those. But it's also important that in this factorization, this is full because then it's mapped to a surjection by this functor. And then on the, on the set side, we can reconstruct the diagram to, be, to preserve the column, uh, the equilibrium. Next lemma, uh, the restriction of the nerve realization factor L, so the restriction is called L prime to zero extensions is fully faithful and preserves full maps and nice diagrams. So first of all, this uh, L is fully faithful on zero extensions because remember this, is, this functor is defined as a, a co-limit over the category of elements. And so the relevant observation is that the category of elements, again, is fi filtered in this case, and then somehow we, there are home functors out of compact objects involved in that commutes. So that means the compact zero extensions are fully embedded into X. And from this, we can deduce that the entire weak factorization system is um, preserved and reflected by this functor because on both sides, it's co generated by a class of arrows, which is, well, we have the same copy of the generating category C on both ends. And then we generate in the full subcategory here and here, and we get the same big factorization system. So this means in particular L prime preserves full maps. And from this, it's also, one can see that nice diagrams are preserved. And here it's important that nice diagrams so we have this jointly full cone conditions. And here it is uh, important that this is uh, stated without referring to the limits of the diagrams of the, because forming the limits would lead out of uh, the compact zero extensions. So this is analogous to this observation that the projective objects in the models of an algebraic theory are um, Close and the weak limits. So here we are doing something similar. Um, okay, so this functor preserves full maps and nice diagrams. Okay, furthermore, we have to show that um, indeed every uh, object of an adequate category can be represented, or uh, there exists a resolution of as a nice diagram for every object, meaning there has to exist a nice diagram such that the co-equalizer of these two face maps is a, a gives, gives A. So how do we construct that? Um, well, A0 is given by co-fibrantly replacing A. So we take the initial inclusion and we fiber, uh, we factor it as an in, uh, extension followed by a full map. Similarly, A1 is given by uh, doing this factorization for the pullback of uh, E against itself. So this uh, quotient map against itself or the uh, covering map against itself. And A, A2 is also constructed in a similar way here. So here we take this pullback. And I forgot to mention that for, for the condition five, we need the, these maps FG. I forgot to mention this, but it's a similar construction. And so this can also be viewed as a kind of uh, a Reedy construction where we take the Reedy model structure on simplicial objects or truncated simplicial objects or the Reedy factorization system and then doing a factorization with respect to this factorization system. And in fact, the Reedy approach would give us a more, uh, well, okay, it's not entirely clear. It's, so with the Reedy approach, we would get diagrams. I think that satis certainly satisfy the conditions one, two, three, and four here, but I'm not sure about condition five. So, but we can, uh, there's an easy construction by hand as I showed here. Um, so, Okay, so with this, we can prove our theorem. 
So the theorem is that adequate categories are clan algebraic. So to prove this, we take in clan algebraic category, take the full subcategory C of compact zero extensions. This is a co-clan. We take its models, and then we want to show that the nerve realization adjunction is an equivalence. And as pointed out earlier, it remains to show uh, to cons that this uh, canonical map from AC into morphisms from C to LA is a bijection for every model A and compact zero extension C. So now, Sorry, let's, Jonas, uh -huh. I may have lost the thread here, but shouldn't you start with an adequate category? Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. This that X should be an adequate category. Thank you. This is a typo. Um, yes. And we want to we take an adequate category. And we want to show that it is equivalent to the category of models on the co clan of compact zero extensions. Okay. So we have to uh, prove a bijection like this essentially. So, and now we take um, a resolution of A by a nice diagram, and then we can argue as follows. We start with the home set from C to LA. So L is this LA is this co-limit over the category of diagrams of A. And then we can rewrite this as home from C to L of the co-equalizer, simply because A is the co-equalizer of these two arrows in the nice diagram and by assumption. Then we can commute the co-equalizer with L because L is preserves arbitrary co-limits. Then we can commute the co-equalizer with homing out of C because homing out of C preserves the co-equalizers of nice diagrams. We've, this is, we've shown this as a lemma that functors preserving finite limits and, and, full, and map, full maps to surjections um, preserve co-equalizers of nice diagrams. And then we can, uh, it's easy to see that Homs from C to the this co-limit are precisely like in bijection with the fiber of A1 and A0 at C by filteredness of this co-limit and compactness of C. And then we re rewrite this. Um, okay, so these are all kind of decomposing the co-limit in uh, in x. And now we somehow have to recompose the co-limit in set and to, to in the end by doing the same steps somehow backwards. And so and in the end uh, we arrive at a c and that's the proof. That's the theorem. And okay, I actually have even a bit of time left over. So I'm gonna talk about part three. And so this part, I, I didn't do any edits. So this uh, it's about models of higher, it, models of clans in higher types. But actually I want to only talk about the examples of clans given here. So we can talk about the models in higher types if, later if you want, but uh, for now I want to focus on the different clan representations for the uh, category of category, small categories. So now if I have any locally finitely presentable category and I want to find a representation if, as a clan by the theorem that we just proved, it's sufficient to uh, exhibit uh, the category as an adequate category. That means finding a weak factorization system that satisfies these conditions. And 
listed in the definition of adequacy. So on the category of categories, there are in fact at least four different factorization systems that satisfy these conditions. So the first one, uh, and th these factorization systems can be described by different sets of generators. And the first one is generated by the inclusion of the empty category to the terminal category and the inclusion of the discrete ca uh, category with two elements to the interval category. So you can think of you have the generation process by adding objects and adding arrows. And this weak factorization system that is generated by these arrows corresponds to the clan representation for cat that I already gave you. So the clan will be uh, this full subcategory of cat on uh, finite uh, categories free on finite graphs. So then we can add generators to this set of generators. For example, we can add a generator that identifies two objects. And so this doesn't somehow we can as a generating process, we can generate the same categories because if we add objects and then we identify them, we I mean that doesn't give us anything new. But it gives a different weak factorization system. Um, yeah, and so in the first case, uh, the class of full maps is the functors that are full and subjective on objects. And that's it's easy to check by hand that these are precisely the functors that lift against these two uh, generating functors. In the second case, by adding this generator, we get functors that are full and bijective on objects. So these are the trivial vibrations for the canonical model structure on, on CAT. And um, so instead of adding this generator to the uh, to the weak factorization so to the gen this generator to the generators we can also add this arrow which identifies two parallel arrows so p is the category with two parallel arrows and then we map it to the interval category and by generating with this so the clan will contain all finitely presentable categories because if i can add objects i can add arrows and I can identify arrows, then I can generate all uh, finitely presented categories. And the right class, the class of full maps for the associated weak factorization system consists of fully faithful and surjective uh, on objects functors. And I'm sorry, I think these are the ones that correspond to the trivial vibrations. I said something wrong before. Here we have uh, full and bijective. And these are, of course, not the trivial vibrations. Um, and finally, we have, if we take all generators, we get uh, the trivial factorization system corresponding to the finite limit clan. And so, yeah, let's talk about this class F2 of full maps again. Full and bijective on objects functors. So these are the functors that correspond to the classical notion of congruence relation on, on a category. So the kind of the easiest notion of congruence relation or the like, most useful one is the one on a category is the one where we say we have a we have equivalence relation on, on, on all home sets and uh, that is uh, that are equivalent with uh, that are compatible with composition and we only identify parallel arrows. So if we only identify parallel arrows, then we get as quotient maps these full and bijective on objects functors. And well, somehow one lesson that we can take away from this is that there's a larger class of well-behaved quotients, which are the where the quotient maps are the full and subjective on objects functors. So there is a way of quotienting categories where we quotient objects and um, <coughs> where we quotient objects and arrows at the same time. And we only have to make sure in this case that the legs of the equivalence relation are, um, are full. Okay, so I think I stop here. Um, thank you for your attention.
Great, thanks very much, Jonas. So we will do our usual visual applause or emoji applause. And then I'll open the floor to questions. Please just unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. Steve? Thanks, Jonas. That's beautiful work. I happen to know that you've been working on that for some time. It's great to see it finished. It's a beautiful result. I think maybe it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. You've recovered the Gabriel Ulmer duality and the Levere duality mentioned as special cases of this theorem. Isn't that correct? Yes, that is correct. So yeah, if, I mean, this exactness condition that is precisely stated in a way that for the finite product case, we get the ordinary bar exactness and for the finite limit case, it's trivial. Okay. So now I do have a question. Um, if we apply this to one of those four different presentations of cat of categories, mm -hmm. clan algebraic, then, in the um, in the category cat, mm -hmm. there's a universal co-category because of uh, the yeah. duality. I mean, and there, are, there are different universal co-categories. Exactly, there are four different yeah. ones, and mm -hmm. the um, the additional exactness condition, the clan exactness condition, which is some sort of a effective descent condition for the full maps mm -hmm. right? tells us something about a descent condition on the universal co-category. Is there some information in there that we could extract about that object? I or haven't thought about it in this terms. Different. A descent condition for the universal co-category. Um, I... I don't know what to say to this at the moment. Okay. Um, I mean, it tells us that mm -hmm. that thing has co-equalizer, which is full, right? Yeah. True. So that says something about, I mean, the universal co-category is going to be, isn't it the arrow category in cat with its co-category structure it has co-category structure. Um, I guess that's what, what it's going to be. I, have, I okay. haven't really thought about this in this okay, good. Yeah, that's something, something for the students to think about. I think it would be fun. There'd be something interesting there. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, I see Chaitanya has a question. Go ahead. He has the answer already. No. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jonas. That was a great talk. Um, I had a question about something that you didn't really end up talking about, which was the models in higher toposes, in spaces and in other higher toposes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so my question is kind of general. So there's an interesting homotopy theory of uh, models, at least in spaces, of ordinary algebraic theories. So you have some interesting uh, strictification results, for instance. And do you, um, have you been able to do, do, do you know of this theory? Have you been able to generalize some of this stuff to clan yeah. algebraic theory? And interesting, you said strictification. Can you, can you elaborate? I, yeah. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about right now. So, mm -hmm. for instance, you have um, certain Quillen equivalences of model categories between uh, simplicial objects in uh, uh, algebras of, your, of an algebraic theory. So, uh, uh, or uh, models in in space in simplicial sets uh, and of models in spaces. So uh, uh, ah, that okay. appreciate, yeah, you, you see what I mean. So this is some old uh, homotopy theory that that's um, work of Badziok and Bergner, and I think Resk as well. Okay, so the answer is no. I haven't thought about this at all. So if I so I, I mean, okay, if I understand correctly what you're saying, the, I mean, a model of a clan in spaces would be 
well a functor to spaces that preserves um, the required uh, terminal object and pullbacks. And then the question is, if I represent spaces by some visual sets, for example, can I get a, a kind of an actual one functor uh, mm -hmm. do, doing that? And I have not worked on that. No, I, I mean, that's a very interesting question. And maybe we can discuss about that at some point. I would like to learn more about that. Uh, maybe I should say that I think the answer is that it's true in general, but it can always be done. Yeah, did, did you do something similar in your thesis? Uh, yeah. I, I kind of I conjectured something similar in my thesis, and I'm I mean Simon and I have been talking about how to how to how to prove that. So. I see. Okay, yeah. So that, yeah, let's talk about this at some point. Thanks. Thanks again for the talk. Thanks for the question. Okay, just feel free to unmute yourself and ask another question. I have a quick question. Can we see the slide on which you proved your main theorem once with that sequence of? Uh... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this one. Uh, can I understand this at a, at a higher level as like there's some class of object C for which, or sorry, yeah. The, some class of objects, uh, sorry, A, for which this is true. And then I want to prove that it's closed under operations like uh, the quotients of these nice diagrams. Is that a, a way you, you could think about this? Uh, maybe like that would be a, a nicer way of stating it. Yeah, writing this list of bijections is not really like the most conceptual way of writing the proof, I guess. Um, like it seems maybe in the middle step you're using it for like when a is representable and then you're the next step you're using it for when a is a filtered colimit of representable something like this um through its closing yeah I, uh, that sounds uh, okay so i would say i take the i consider the category of algebras for which this the unit of the adjunction is an isomorphism and i yeah. want to show that this category of algebras is closed exactly. under uh, filtered co-limits and uh, quotient and yeah, under a set of operations that generate all algebras. Yeah, I guess that's a nice way of, yeah, uh, I think about uh, the presentation like that, that's probably- Yeah, that might make it, I mean, because at some point you're gonna need to use the stuff about the nice diagrams, right? And maybe it'll be a little bit more transparent what's going on. Um, yeah. I'm not sure, but. No, that sounds like a like good way of doing it. I'll ask a question now. Um, you said you didn't want to think of the full morphisms as being trivial vibrations. Um, but when you define the nice diagrams, it did make me think about homotopy limits. Um, because you sort of had a comparison map to the limit that was a full map. I just, I just wonder if there is some fruitful way to find some homotopy theory here and to, to um, a conceptual idea of what's going on. Yes, and so, yeah, I should also credit Mathieu with, uh, with who I discussed a lot of this. And so just, uh, I think, uh, Mathieu, feel free to jump in, but so the, what seems to be happening is that on this category of um, simplicial objects or truncated simplicial objects, I always have a, a, I mean, even though, so what we do classically with uh, this Reedy theory is that I have a, a model structure on the underlying category and then I get a model structure on the category of diagrams. But actually here we only have one factorization system on the underlying category, but still we get something homotopy like on the category of diagrams. And so there's a can condition that we get for free somehow um, or a trivial a can condition, I guess. Um, because the really I mean, the really structure is defined in terms of boundary inclusions. Um, 
which correspond to trivial vibrations. Mathieu, uh, do you want to say something? Uh, maybe, yeah, in my mind, the, this weak factorization that Jonas is, uh, consider is, is not related to homotopy theory. It's on top of the two factorization system of co-fibrations and trivial vibrations and trivial co-fibrations and vibrations. So we could do exactly a model structure kind of analog of the clan theory where the, the, the um, factorization EF considered by Jonas would be a third factorization system compatible with the two factorization systems of homotopy theory. Uh, but it's not on itself homotopy theory. It, it's meant to be a weak factorization system on the infinity category associated to a model structure. But it's a non-trivial weak factorization system on an infinity category. OK, thank you. But yeah, I mean, this, this resolution, I mean, it gives us the original object as, a, as an actual co-limit. So um, I don't know if this is a homotopy theoretic thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I was a little, I mean, I'm still a little bit, uh, it it's a still a little bit mysterious to me why you're interested in kind of like a three term resolution if you're considering something about a one category, right? It feels like it's a little bit, uh, it's too much, a mismatch that, or something you wouldn't expect. But what Dan's question made me think about the following fact if you want to make a model category that, like, so simplicial, the category simplicial set we know has a model structure that models spaces. But if you're only interested in modeling like n types of spaces, you can also do it by truncating your simplicial sets, but you have to go a little bit farther than you think you should. So for example, if you want a model category that models sets and you want the co-fibrations to be monomorphisms, you can't take the category of sets because then the co-fibrations will be wrong, but you could take the category of simplicial sets up to degree one, and you're really considering graphs. And then the whole type of a graph is this, just it's pi zero. And maybe that is somehow accounting for this kind of off by one um, feature. I don't know. It, I mean, you want, to you want to regard your object as a presented as a quotient, but then you have kind of like one more level of something. I don't know if there's something. Really yeah, important. so, I mean, the analogy is really pseudo equivalence relations. So we want, I mean, pseudo equivalence relations are kind of graph objects or reflexive graph objects, but the problem is that in the definition of a pseudo equivalence relation, we have to talk about pullbacks because, uh, I mean, to express the transitivity in a pseudo equivalence relation. But we want to do this within the category of zero extensions where we don't have pullbacks. And then we, I mean, this pullback is later, is like naturally the third level of the simplicial diagram. So, I mean, in a sense, if you have a two truncated simplicial diagram, you can, or if you have level zero and one, then you can naturally add level two just by taking a pullback in a sense. If, um, and then we just cover this pullback by a, um, by an, by a zero extension. So, I, yeah. So the, but I mean the the in the end what we the co-limit is computed on it's only the co-limit of these two maps the only the other maps only give us properties. So the homotopy, yeah. So this doesn't com, uh, contribute to the computation. Maybe that's also a point. It makes no difference whether you include it or not, right? It's, it yeah, but I have to state it as a I mean as as conditions or as structure. Yeah. I mean maybe it's better to. I could only take the D0 and D1 as structure and state everything else as conditions also. Maybe that would be less confusing. Could you show the definition of the nice diagram again? Yeah. So then it would be that one and two are conditions on the just the equivalence relation part and then the others are there exist A2 and A2 is mostly that it's a zero. Exactly.
Yeah, I want to, I mean, in the end, I want to have a diagram that only lives in zero extensions, and I want to make sure that it's a uh, truncation is a component by full equivalence relation. Um, and I, yeah. And the only way I could express this was through this uh, weak, uh, these kind of weak limits or jointly full diagrams. Yeah, so the so A two only appears in condition three, right? Yes. So there's also this paper of um, Carboni and Vitale on exact completion of. Uh, weekly lex categories so on categories with weak finite limits. And there, I mean, we have precisely this uh, property, uh, this problem that if we want to define the exact completion of a category with weak finite limits, then we have to state the transitivity by saying there exists a weak pullback of this form and then a transitivity map down to, or a composition map down to A1. Right, A2 um, only appears in three, except that D1 from A2 to A1 also is like its existence is, that's the transitivity. Exactly. If you didn't have D1, you could always build A2 by forming the pullback and then taking a cover. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Okay, any more questions? Okay, let's thank Jonas again. And our next speaker is Marcelo Fiore in two weeks, February 17th. I hope to see you there.